let the peace, love, and blessing of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Re-examine your work. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader or Lumba or Lumba or Boo, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 7 verse 4. Second lesson, James chapter 3 verse 13. Golden text, Galatians chapter 6 verse 4. Every person should prove his own work. Examine your work before you boast. Quote, brethren, that is the theme of our revelation tonight. Let every man examine his own work so that he can have what to boast about. If you do not repent and forsake your sin, how will you know a person who is truly repentant? If you are not righteous, how will you know a righteous person? If you have not refrained from exasperation, falsehood, backbiting, fornication, theft, indulgence in the preparation of concoction, how will you be how will you be in a position to correct or rebuke or reprove others who commit these vices? All those who impute sins against others have not yet repented of their sins. That is why they so impute. All those who continue to find faults with others are not yet repentant. When you come across a person who goes about reporting his brethren to others, complaining that his brethren have committed one type of offense or another, which that person you will discover that he has not yet forsaken sin. When you come across somebody who complains that he is not loved by any person, know that he himself has no love. When you see somebody complaining that someone has deceived him or has told him a lie or has done one thing or the other adversely to him, if you investigate, he has not refrained from those vices. Abhor evil and cleave to that which is good. What I want you to do is to come here and do that which is good to all men. My indebtedness to you and your indebtedness to me is for you to do what is good to me and I will reciprocate your example. But when you go to criticize or condemn or tell people they are not good, you are but a confusionist. But you have no right to judge or to cheat or to disgrace or to beat up or insult or to take a court action against any person. What is left open for you and I is for us to purify ourselves and practice goodness. If you profess that you are a child of God, go and do what is good to others. But when you begin to criticize, condemn, disgrace, abuse and insult, you have not done anything because that is not the work of God. To the pure, all things are pure. It is said, unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. 
but even their mind and conscience is defiled. When you come across somebody who criticizes or condemns or complains that people are doing one thing or the other, know that such a person is a bad man. If you come across a person who demands that you should do one thing or the other for people, to do one thing for you and then for the other man, know that such a person is not doing the work of God. If you profess to be a man of God, go and do to others those things which you desire that people should do unto you. Any person who profess to be a man of God can be qualified as such only if he indulges in well-doing. Your childhood of God can be seen and known by your good conduct. To be engaged in reporting, backbiting, quarreling, insulting, abusing, hating, disgracing, beating up and beating up and tail bearing against your brother is not the work of God. To go about requesting for certain things everywhere or to collect things from people everywhere or to demand as of right anything from any person is not the work of God. To be engaged in tail bearing, you go to the left and report what somebody has done. Then you pass to the right and report what somebody has said is not the work of God. To engage in random criticism or condemnation of any person is not the work of God. To engage in random frivolous utterances is not the work of God. It is also not the work of God to practice another, to praise another person or yourself. Only righteousness dwells in the kingdom. This is the time that we should be the doers of the word of God. Doing exactly what the word of God directs you to do. This is the new kingdom of God and herein dwells righteousness. And so whatever good works any person is able to do, let him do. But evil deeds are abhorred in it. If you know you cannot do any good thing, start now to change from your critical outlook and disposition, run away from sin and all evil things and practice what is good. It is not your duty to go about criticizing your brethren, speaking evil about them, insulting, ab abusing, condemning, finding fault with them. Brethren, I do not wish to overload you with this lesson. The first lesson will now be read. First lesson, Matthew chapter 7 verse 4. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mold out of thine own eyes? Brethren, have you heard the word of God read to you? How will you advise your brother to remove a small piece of stick from his eyes, whereas there is a mighty beam in your own eye? How will you advise your brother to refrain from theft, fornication, falsehood, and other vices, whereas you are still fornicating, stealing, and telling lies? How will you advise a man to refrain from all manners of sin, whereas you have not refrained from a single sin? How will you enjoin somebody to do what is good and righteous, whereas you do not know what is good and righteous? Now, would you want to do good? 
Remove the beam in your eye and you will see the moat. If you go to obtain arms from a brother and you do not succeed in obtaining it, you began to criticize that the brother has no love. Do you have love yourself? If you had love, would you have embarrassed your brother? Sometimes you receive something on loan from somebody and when it is due, he comes so that you defray the loan, but you cannot repay the loan. And you begin to criticize that because he wants you to repay the loan, he has no love. What about you who are liable to a breach of contract? Have you love? If you had love, you would repay the loan. Our duty now is to endeavor to remove the big beam from our own eye and we will see clearly to cast out the moat out of our brother's eye. Each of us sitting down here has a beam in our own eyes and our duty is first to remove this big beam from our eyes. It is said, Oh no man anything but to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. It is also said, We are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the promptings of the flesh. Can you realize that the debt we own is the debt of doing what is good to all? You do not owe any person the duty to abuse or insult him, to beat him up and disgrace him, to speak slanderous words against him or to begrudge him. Whether or not somebody dances dexterously well is none of your concern, but dance your own, dance, but dance yours dexterously well. Whether or not a person sings melodiously is not your bother, but you sing yours well. You are not to be concerned about the type of dress somebody puts on. Neither are you concerned about the type of food he eats. You should be concerned with the acts of doing good. Judge not that you should not be judged. It is said, speak not evil one of another. He that speaks evil of his brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy and who is God who are you who judges another the tendency to judge one another is what causes trouble in the entire world a great many of us before we left our houses to this place of worship had abused slandered insulted criticized and quarreled with our brothers is that the work of God who has taught you to speak evil against your own brother who has taught you to be a beggar who has taught you to do that who has taught you to insult and disgrace your own brethren you are only taught to do that which is good the scripture says to him who knows to do good and does it not to him to him it is sin if you go to somebody's house and there you observe that the house is dirty and the compound is unkept instead of your interrogating the inmate of the house asking why they do not sweep the house but but decide 
to dwell in a filthy environment, take up the broom, sweep and garnish the house and keep it in a complete sanitary condition. Be doers, be doers of the word, not hearers only. You go to somebody's house and see that everywhere is littered with dirty clothes. Do not question the sister and ask why clothes are kept carelessly around the, around the place and why they are not washed. It is what you were sent. It is what you were sent to do. We have been taught to be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. If you are a child of God, one who practices the word of God, you go into the house and find it dirty and unkept. Take up the broom and tidy it up. If the dresses are so are dirty, wash and dry them. If there is no food in the house, you have to go to the market, buy food and cook for the inmates to eat. That is exactly what you are expected to do as a child of God. If you discover that there is trouble in the house, communication has broken down between husband and wife and the relationship between them, between the father and the children is not cordial, quickly enter into it in order to bring about a settlement and also resolve the differences with a view to restoring an amicable and cordial atmosphere for the entire household. It is not your duty to, it is not your duty to gather the children and rebuke them and scourge them. Neither is it your duty to condemn the parents for not being able to look after their children. You do not have to instigate the children against the father, nor will you antagonize the father against the wife and children. Do not be weary in well-doing. Remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Whoever is not with me is against me, and whosoever does not gather with me scatters abroad. If your duty now is to criticize, look pessimistic at things. Do not consider things objectively if you are flippant and critical of all situations. You should stop for a moment, rearrange your thinking and go back to start afresh because you have not yet started your duty in this kingdom of God. What is required in this kingdom is practicing the word of God. This is not the time to engage in a rigmarole or to make complaints to people or to report any person to another person or to lodge a report about anything with any person. If you discover that a brother is indebted to another person, all you have to do is to defray the debt for him. If a brother is unemployed, find some job for him. You come across a sister who has no feeding money. Give her money. That is what you have to do, but not to be critical destructively of the situation that she is poor and lazy and that she is fond of begging. Never you do it. Do only that which is good. That is your duty. God has not given any person the authority to judge any other person 
or to criticize or to condemn. He has not given any person the license to abuse, insult, disgrace any person. But he has given us the license to do that which is good in the sight of God. Whosoever does not what, whosoever does what is good has brought about peace within the world. We live by deeds and not by words. It does not serve any useful purpose for you to introduce yourself to people as a bishop, pastor, apostle, evangelist and elder, but it is rather useful for you to do good with a view to helping people. Were you a child of God, would you have been angry? Would you pronounce war on people? Were you a man of God, would you speak evil against anyone or would you be exasperated with anyone? Many people are fond of saying that they do not fear any person and if any person offends against them they will rebuke him on his face. Do you think if you show such courage and rebuke somebody publicly you are doing the work of God? What has the scripture told you? It says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. God has not directed God has not directed that you should oppress one who is with you, neither has he said that you should abuse or curse him, nor to beat him up, nor to backbite against him, nor to criticize him. One who is a child of God and the practitioner of the word will always use the spirit of meekness, humility, patience, love, peace, lowliness of the heart to advise any sinner in order to salvage him out of his destruction and to enable him to overcome his difficulties and, and tread on the path of rectitude. If you express that you will only love those who love you and hate those who hate you, that is not the work of God. Man's art is the sum total of his behavior. If you were a wise man bestowed with intelligence, you would have trusted in and be a practitioner of the Christ injunction which says, love your enemies, do good to them who despitefully use you and persecute you. Sometimes you opine that if it were possible to know what is in a man's heart, things would have been different. What is in one's heart? I want to tell you that a man's character or some total of his behavior is his heart. A person who goes about beating up people, insulting, criticizing, disgracing, quarreling and fighting cannot be a man of God. But a person who unifies scattered group of people, pleads for peace, seeks for reconciliation and is peaceable with every man is a man of God, with the spirit of God. It is said, if any person is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, use peace, spirit of meekness, patience, love, lowliness of art to restore him. But be careful 
lest you are also tempted. The work of God is not to go about causing trouble and confusion, telling lies, deceiving people, insulting and disgracing them. The work of God is to be patient in tribulation, rejoicing in hope, forgiving people their trespasses, not imputing sins, using the spirit of meekness to restore offenders to God, their, fa their maker. Any good man of God will not plot evil against anyone, nor will he speak evil against any person, nor impute sins upon any person. Brethren, I do not wish to take you further than this. Our second lesson should, will now be read. Second lesson. James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is wise? Who is a wise man and endured with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Brethren, can you observe the license which God has given to us? God has given both you and I to do good work. But he has not given us the spirit of frivolity or backbiting or quarreling or fighting or insulting or criticizing. You go to somebody's house and straight away you start criticizing him that he is maintaining his wife badly. He does not care well for his children because he beats them always and that he has not exercised patience for anything. Who has sent you to do that? Is that the work of God? Is that the word of God? If you were wise and prudent, you would not have criticized or spoken evil, but you would buy you would buy clothes both for the wife and the children. It is said that no man lights a candle and covers it with a bushel. Whosoever is wise and prudent with understanding will demonstrate his good work. When somebody offends against him, he will be very peaceful and tolerant. Overcome evil with good. Why are why we are taught the virtues of love, peace, truth, patience is that we may use them to interact with those who are less fortunate than ourselves. A great many people in this world who have not been endowed with the Holy Spirit find it difficult that an ordinary human being can wear the armor of these virtues. This explains why they find it difficult to associate with those who possess them. Since you have all been sent forth to evangelize the world, you are spiritual. You have to use these virtues in winning them first to yourself and then to God. You cannot use fire to quench fire. You can only use water to put out fire. In the same token, you should not be overcome with evil, but you should be overcome evil with good. If you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, glory not and lied not against the truth, for that wisdom does not descend from above, but it is earthly, devilish, and sensual. For where Envying and strife is, 
There is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and hypocrisy. A great many people argue that they quarrel because of the brotherhood or that they quarrel and fight for the sake of the leader. This is erroneous. You do not fight and quarrel because of brotherhood or the leader, but because you do not believe in God. Neither do you know what is right before God. What did our Lord Jesus Christ tell the woman of Jerusalem who were crying and wailing? He said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but for yourselves and your children. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? If in a certain place there is trouble, stealing one another's property, sisters seducing others' husbands and husbands eloping with people's wives, which uh, when a man of God arrives at such a place, he must bring about some settlement and reconcile the warring factions. This is the work of any man of God. You are not told to go to a battle and constitute yourself into a court and become a judge over it to try people. Why you are sent out is that you should go and show by practical demonstration how to practice the words of God to those who cannot practice them. When you go out, you have to teach them exactly what you have been told to do. Our Lord Jesus Christ commissioned his, his, his disciples saying, Go you therefore and reach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. My duty and our duty is for us to go out to teach people exactly what we are shown in this new kingdom of God. Whosoever cannot do any good thing has nothing to boast about because he has not done anything and therefore has nothing to say or boast about. God does not take pleasure in the death of an evil man. God does not wish that you tempt your brother and then go about reporting him to others. God is not slack concerning his promise, but his long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but they all should come to repentance. Every person should prove his own work before boasting. Do not boast on the, on the achievement of your father or your church or about what your family has done unto God, <coughs> but boast on what you have done to God. Some people boast that brotherhood is power, but they themselves have never boasted of their power or prayer and healing. Others boast that there is much love in brotherhood, but they themselves have never done any good thing. They have neither refrained from falsehood, fornication, theft, idolatry. What is their boast? It is said, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. Paul boasted 
in his achievements. Our Lord Jesus Christ boasted also in his achievement. John the Baptist boasted in his own work. They did not boast or have rejoicing in another man's achievements. By refraining from all acts of sin, by not imputing sin upon others, by not being by not hating or begrudging or quarreling and fighting with others. Right now, you are still fornicating, still stealing, drinking, and eating meat, snuffing, with retaining your membership of the secret society. You fight and quarrel, impute sins, and commit many other vices. What will you boast of? If you profess to be a man of God, but you steal, fornicate, worship idol, and yet you are at regular attendance at worship, and people acclaim you as somebody who practices the word of God. Is that assessment correct? How do you assess yourself? Sometimes you are secretly indulging in the preparation of concoction or hiding in the room to drink and fornicate but are claimed to be very religious. Is that a correct assessment of your behavior? Good works exalted our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ did the work of God and so God exalted him and gave him a name which is above every other name. Do you have anything to boast about? When you shout upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, do you derive any benefit? Since you use the name Jesus in your prayers, how many good things have you done? Do not boast in what your father has done or in what your child has done, nor in what Moses did, nor in what David did, nor in what the Christ did but boast in what you can do. Do you remember what our Lord Jesus Christ told the woman who said, Blessed is the womb that bear you and the pups which you have sucked. Our Lord Jesus Christ replied, It is rather more blessed to those who hear the word of God and practice them. The golden text will now be read. Golden text, Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. But let every man prove his work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. Brethren, have you heard that? You have not refrained from any act of sin. You do not believe in God. But the whole world acclaims you as the child of God. Would you appreciate such a compliment? You are still fornicating and stealing and telling lies, but you rise up to testify that you have refrained from fornication and theft and falsehood. Are you deceiving yourself or are you really righteous? Have you ever seen a preacher or any other person confessing on the pulpit that he's a drunkard, a snuffer, a fornicator, a liar, a necromancer, a thief, a member of a secret society? The church denominations preach to their members that they should do what they preach and not what they actually do. Who preaches that type of sermon? Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. In Our Lord Jesus Christ said, 
Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Emulate my example and walk according to my footsteps. As I love you, love you, one another. When our Lord Jesus Christ wanted to wash the disciples' feet, Peter objected to his washing his feet. But the Christ told him, If I do not wash, you you have nothing with me if he did not wash his legs how would he have told him to go and do likewise to others practice what you preach as you are you have to love you are not truthful you are not patient and humble and peaceful but you advise somebody to be humble truthful patient humble and peaceful from whom will they emulate the example how will they keep these injunctions in as long as you do not keep them you are aware that you preach what you are when you mount the pulpit and preach to people that they should not steal, fornicate, drink, tell lies. You are telling them that you do not commit these offenses again. If you do not break any of them again, they will learn from your example and your sermon will be effective. Why you remain in the church denomination and cannot practice the word of God is that they preach to you to do what they say and not what they do. You are a bold, you are a born Presbyterian. Your parents have no good qualities. Even if you remain there for 100 years, you will have nothing to boast about. You have been a brotherhood, but you continue to steal, fornicate, indulge in the preparations of concoction and tell lies. What will you preach? It is only on the Father that all must boast. Let me tell you one thing. You can only boast in the Father. You have to boast. You have no boast of your own. Have I, see, have I seen somebody practicing the word of God? What about you? I want you to boast in your work. There is no person who can preach. What will you preach as you have not refrained from sin? You always tell people that they should follow you to see somebody who can preach and practice the word of God but it is said every person should boast in his own work not in the work of another person the main reason that you bring people to see the father is that you cannot boast of anything because you steal you fornicate tell lies and indulge in preparation of concoction since the father alone practices the word he is the only model people should follow that explains why you direct people to him what about you it is said each person should boast in his own work preach and practice so that you have life preaching alone cannot change any person but practical demonstration of what one preaches can change if you were a member of a secret society, you indulge in the preparations of concoction, fornicated, drunk, but when you come to the truth, you refrain from all these vices and then go about testifying to people that you were a member of several secret societies, but now you having seen the truth, you have denounced your membership of the society. That you were an arch fornicator and womanizer but now you have refrained from drinking 
and preparation of concoction. All those who listen to you have been your friends. They will be convinced and you will have a large following. Others who looked at you as a wayward child will be happy to see you reform. They will also follow you to the Father. If, if he who was in love with you comes to your house and you politely tell him that you have now become a brotherhood and you have refrained from fornication and warned him not to come to your house again, he will be so bamboozled that he has decided to follow you to the place of worship. I see that you people are doing what the Jehovah Witnesses are doing. They give testimony about the miracles wrought by our Lord Jesus Christ. You also give the same testimony, but you have not boasted of yourself. Those who testify in this way are false witnesses because they did not actually see when our Lord Jesus Christ wrought those miracles. We should boast in our own work and not in the work of Paul or Peter or John 